let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about radiant piping for thermal batteries. And what I mean by that is the type of material you need to use or choose by to heat up and withdraw the heat from your thermal battery. Now, I've had other videos where I talk about types of thermal batteries. That's not this video. Your thermal battery can be a liquid water, it can be dirt, clay, it can be sand, or it could be any of a number of other materials, uh, even a phase change material. But this video will talk about what type of piping you can use as an option to put heat in and to take heat out of that thermal battery. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we got piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing and the heating systems that you can use to keep your greenhouse growing. So if you get a chance, hit that like button. It helps you and it helps me. Because if you hit the like button, it's kind of like paying me. What it does is it tells YouTube, you don't just want to watch this video, but you like it and you want to see more videos like it. So YouTube, then the algorithm goes to my videos and pushes it out to more people like you. Win, win. Now, before I get into the types of piping, I'm going to explain that there is basically two ways to put heat into and draw heat out of a thermal battery, whether it's water, whether it's sand, whether it's clay, whether it's a phase change material. And what that is, is there's liquid piping. So you can take a liquid like water or antifreeze or some other liquid material that can withstand higher heats than water to put the heat in and out. And there's also air. Air piping is another way of heating up your thermal battery. So in this video, we're just going to go over the piping and I'll explain whether you can use that piping with air or with liquid. So when it comes to heating a thermal battery, especially for a greenhouse or even a house for heating situations, one of the more common ones you're going to see in the DIY type situations is weeping tile for an air medium to transfer the heat in and transfer the heat out. Weeping tile is affordable. You can get it in four and six inch options and it transfers heat relatively reasonably. I mean, it's not the best heat transfer medium out there. But it works and it works on a budget and a lot of people are actively using this right now. The beautiful thing about weeping tile is you can buy it from your local hardware store or any of a number of online merchants like eBay, Alibaba, even Amazon. The next grade up from weeping tile is steel or aluminum air piping. So what we're talking about here is large tubes, just like weeping tile, but that you can put air through. The advantage to doing it with steel or aluminum or some type of metal piping is temperature. If you're heating air up to a large degree and you have steel piping, you can accommodate that. If you were to put a lot of heat through weeping tile, it's going to melt. But heat can handle enormous, or steel and metal can handle enormous amounts of heat and still radiate that heat into your thermal battery and radiate the heat back into the metal so that the air can act as a transfer medium. Another possible option for using air to heat your thermal battery is terracotta. You get a little more temperature resistance than weeping tile and plastic. It can be brittle though. So if you're in a location where the ground is prone to move in some way or another, terracotta maybe is not for you. But if you're in a stable location and you have access to cheap terracotta piping, you can transfer air through that and heat the ground up and pull the heat from the ground with terracotta piping at an affordable rate. So this is a type of material maybe you can consider if it's available at good prices in your region. Now, this next option allows you to use either water or air. 
depending on the size of the piping that you're gonna do. And it's ABS sewer pipe. Now, once again, this depends upon if you can get the material at a good price. Sometimes you can get it recycled at a really good price. And if you're gonna push air through it, you need to look at the larger piping. If you're gonna push liquid through it, you need to look at the smaller piping. But ABS piping comes in all sizes. You can get it down to a half inch, inch, right up to three, four, five inch or more. So it's kind of a dual purpose option that you could use to transfer air or liquid to heat up your thermal battery with. Another option similar to ABS is PVC piping. Now, from a contractor standpoint, the main difference between ABS and PVC is price. ABS is generally better. It's thicker, it's stronger. PVC uh, Schedule 40 is thin. You may be able to get Schedule 80, which has got a little more strength to it, but then your price is going through the roof. That being said, it also comes in all sizes. You can get it down to half inch or smaller, right up to three, four, five, six inch. So this material can be used for liquid and or air, depending on what you want to do with your system. But being a plastic type material, there are limits on how much heat you can push through this. Probably the best material you can use to transfer heat at a semi-reasonable price. I'm not saying it's the cheapest out there, but it's a lot cheaper than making something out of aluminum piping, is copper. Up till recently, most of your house is plumbed with copper. It transfers liquid beautifully. There's all kinds of connections you can get at virtually any hardware store or online seller to hook up the system. And copper can handle some amazing temperatures. So if you're going to deal with a solar system, uh, a thermal solar liquid system that can get two, three, four, five hundred degree Celsius liquids, this is no problem for copper. It's a wonderful thing to look at. The most common liquid transfer tubing available today is PEX. Now, PEX is designed to handle up to about 80, 85 degrees Celsius. So if your thermal heat source goes over that, PEX becomes a little bit of an issue. But if you're dealing with lower temperatures, PEX as a liquid heat transfer tubing is very affordable. You can put an enormous amount of PEX through a large thermal battery and draw the heat out in a wonderful way. You could put several runs through a large thermal battery and draw the heat out. So PEX is something that you're probably going to look at unless your heat transfer method goes much over 80, 85 degrees Celsius. There is a super PEX and I like to call it a super PEX. It's not running around with a cape on it or anything, but what this type of PEX does is it can get you a lot closer to 100 degrees Celsius with a liquid. And it's called a LumaPEX. And basically what it is, is it's PEX, but it's PEX that has an aluminum covering over the plastic, which allows it to handle a lot more heat. And as a side effect, if you've ever had to lay PEX on the ground, you're gonna know that it bends and flops and goes all over the place. But a LumaPEX, stays in place. If you bend it, it stays where you bend it. And I'm going to tell you, if you're installing this stuff, and I have, once you try Aluminapex or Alumapex, and there's other commercial names out there for it, but that's the one I like to use, you're not going to buy PEX again. It's not that much more money, but it is so much easier to install. It's crazy. And you get a few more degrees of safety out of it. Now, the last type of piping I'm going to look at is poly piping. And the reason I'm going to mention that is it works really well on things like a compost pile that doesn't get super hot. Poly piping will melt if you start getting into 100 plus degrees Celsius. But if you're dealing with a controlled heat source like a compost pile, it's not going to get much over 150 Fahrenheit or, you know, 60, 70 degrees Celsius at its maximum. Poly piping is affordable and you can get it in one inch, two inch, inch and a half, 
type diameters and it's strong, it's durable, and it works in underground situations. Most of the water lines that are coming to your house in many developments now are made from a poly water line type material. So this is something, as long as you're not using a super hot heat source into your thermal battery, poly is, poly water lines are definitely something that you can consider. So that's the summary. Nine types of tubing that you can use with air or water or some type of liquid to insert and extract heat from your thermal battery. I hope you're finding this useful and I hope you're actually considering making a thermal battery because this is free energy. If we use solar or wind to heat up and it's a wonderful way to heat a greenhouse and greenhouses suck up a lot of energy so they cost a lot of money to heat. So the different parts of a thermal battery, as we start examining them and taking them apart, are a little bit important if this is something that you're interested in.